If you're looking for an easy and delicious appetizer that will impress your guests this holiday season, you are in the right place. Paul Lilicus joins us with a cheese board that is the perfect mix of salty and sweet. I don't think I've seen a cheese board that I didn't love, but this one in particular is incredible. Paul, it looks so good. Yeah, Tracy, I mean, if it's the first time I'm seeing people this year, my friends or my family, you know I'm not showing up with a regular cheese board. I'm not showing up with mozzarella sticks. I want to show up with something that's special, that's going to get that ooh-ah-ah -ah moment, that surprise and delight reaction, and that's exactly what I've brought today. Ooh, this recipe is like it's very sophisticated, but it's also very fun, and that's what you want when you're having a get-together. This is what you're going to need. All right, Paul, why don't you get started? All right, so... Of course, this recipe starts with brie. We're making a crispy fried brie and pear cheese board. Brie and pears being a, a classic combination. And we're going to take a wheel of brie here, about a 500 gram wheel of brie, cut it up into wedges, and then we're going to batter and fry them. So let's start with the brie here. So a little tip. I want to cut this wheel into 16 perfect wedges. So instead of cutting it in half and then trying to cut like this around, you know, do it like a sushi chef would do. Cut it in half, then cut that half in half, so you've got a quarter. Then cut that quarter in half, so you have an eighth. Then cut that eighth in half, so you have a sixteenth. And then you get these beautiful wedges just like this. Now, I've got my breading station ready. It's a classic flour egg mixture panko breading station. I've added a little bit of salt to the flour and a little bit of salt and water to the egg mixture here, just to season. And now I'm going to use some forks, dip each wedge into the flour mixture, shake off the excess into the egg mixture, get that nice and coated, and then into the panko mixture, using separate forks because we want to keep them nice and neat. This is a bit of a labor of love, you know what I mean? <laughs> we are taking the time to make an appetizer that's going to delight our friends or our family, whoever you're serving, and we are double breading these because we want them to be Nicely coated. We want that brie to be totally encased. So back into the egg mixture and then back into the panko mixture. When I saw the recipe, I thought you were actually just going to take the whole yeah. wheel and like, you know, dredge the whole wheel. But you're doing it piece by piece. And I think that that is fantastic. So take the time to do it properly. Absolutely. And look how beautiful these are. Now onto a sheet pan and we're going to actually par freeze these. So into the freezer for about an hour. And why do you want to uh, freeze the cheese there, Paul? Okay, so we've all broken into a baked brie, I hope, and you, you know how well it melts, it oozes out. So by par-freezing this, you're going to give that breading a little head start in our 350-degree oil to get crisp and become a solid coating so the brie doesn't ooze out. So now into our hot oil, keeping it as close to 350 as possible, and now we're just going to give these a shallow fry, which means we're going to have to flip them very gently. It's a delicate process, everyone. So I like the way you've slid them in very delicately and he's turning them over delicately because we do not want to break that brie. That's going to be happening later at the party. We definitely don't. That's right. That's right. I mean, and this is really a good idea to make if you're hosting the party because you can make it right before serving. And we're going to serve it up on a nice board with some accoutrement. So some pear. I've got some pear here and I like to just slice it like this, right off of the core, and just toss that core, put these down on the flat side, and nice thin slices with your knife so that you can fan them out on the board. While you do that, I'm just wondering, uh, Paul, if you can't find ripe pears, is there uh, another fruit that you would recommend pairing with the fried brie? No pun intended. Yeah, <laughs> I would say use an apple. Use a nice tart apple, maybe a Granny Smith, you know, even uh, an ambrosia. Something that has good crunch to it, has some sweetness, but also has some tartness that will pair nicely with the brie. On the board here, I've also added some honey for drizzling and some fresh spices. So this isn't just a cheese board. This is kind of a culinary experience. So I've added a little toasted ground cardamom and some nutmeg with a grater. So if you kind of want to play with it, you can drizzle a little bit of honey. You could put it on a piece of toasted baguette, add a slice of pear, you know, play with it so that each bite is a little bit different. Keep these moving. And I always have some paper towel on a plate ready to go when they get out of that hot oil. And of course, I have some done here. Look at these beauties. 
They look fantastic. Thanks, <laughs> Paul. His recipes and instructions are up on our website. You're welcome. So you can recreate that incredible cheese board for your holiday